Hi, I'm Peter Matavish and welcome back to another DCG tutorial. So in this question, we're doing the surface geometry question from the 2014 paper. That's question C3. So as always, read through it first and then we'll set about doing the question. So a concept design for a proposed US Marshalls Museum in America is shown in the graphic below. The plan of the building was inspired by a pentag uh, pentagonal star shape on the Marshalls badge. All right, so based on a pentagon. A figure C3 shows the plan elevation of three intersecting triangular surfaces A, B and C uh, which form part of the structure. The outline plan is based on a regular pentagon. So A, draw the regular pentagon and complete the given plan and elevation of surfaces A and B. Determine the hedral angle between the surfaces A and B. C, determine the vertical trace and horizontal trace of the plan which contains surface B and the hedral angle between surface B and C is 160, so then complete the projections for surface C. Okay, so first things first, we have to do the plan and elevation of surfaces A and B. And easy thing to do is start off with the plan because it's given you the length of the pentagon. As a pentagon, so you know the angle is 72 degrees, and we know then the top of the pentagon will be at the tip there, it will be the X, Y, and I. Uh, there is a scale of 1 is 500, so scale down those measurements. All right, so do the plan elevation and we'll see after that, okay? I'll fast forward to that section. Okay, so that has the plan elevation done of surfaces A, B, and also we had seen the plan, so might as well draw in strong while it's there. Now we can't find an elevation, obviously, but they didn't ask for that yet, so forget about that for the time being. So part A, draw the regular pentagon and complete the given plan and elevation of surfaces A and B, so that's part A done. Part B, determine the hedral angle between the surfaces A and B. So to get to the hedral angle, we need to see the two surfaces as edge views so then we see the true angle between them. So we have our line of intersection here between A and B, same line is down here. Now in neither view is it parallel to the X, Y line. That's your, that's your X, Y line. So if it's not parallel in any of the views that means it's not a true shape or a true length I should say. So that means we need to project perpendicular from one of them and get your heights from the plan. So do an auxiliary plan basis or canoe. So if we project from the elevation, it's going to be an auxiliary plan. If you project it from the plan, it'd be an auxiliary elevation. All right. So we're going to go perpendicular to the line of intersection here in elevation, because I think I have more room up there. So use a just with set square just to get the angle first. Okay, so project all your points from the elevation of those two surfaces perpendicular to that line section up here to the top. So you're going perpendicular to that line in section. Put in a new X1, Y1. Again, your X, Y, X, Y lines are always perpendicular to projection lines. So X1, Y1. Now you're projecting from the elevation. That means this is going to be an auxiliary plan. So for it to be an auxiliary plan, you need to get your distances, your heights up from the X, Y line from the plan. So we're measuring from the X, Y line down. Save me a bit of room. I'm just going to put in a datum line, which we already have across here. So that is our datum line, which means this point here is going to be on the X, Y line. That point will be measured from the datum line down. 
So I'm going to get the distance from the data line down for that point here. So that's giving me my, my height. Projected up here, that is a point on the A surface. That height is the same height for the distance here on the B surface, so find that point there. And of course I've gone off the sheet, hope you can still see that. Okay, so that's my point there, just gone off the sheet onto the board. That was that point here, now let's find distance from the Daten line to this top point here, the B, which is that point here. So now we have a range of points, so let's join them all in. So this first point here joins to that point and the top point of the B. So this is surface B, that surface A, your line of intersection is these two points here. So now that is a true length here. We might draw that in strong so you can see it a bit better. So by drawing perpendicular from the plan, from the elevation here, this line is parallel to the X1, Y1, therefore this has to be a true length. And if that line is a true length, if we look parallel to it, we'll see a point view of it, which will give us surface A and B as edge views. So we're projecting out the same angle as that there. So again, use your adjustable set square. So I'm projecting out all the points out here to the left-hand side, even the one that's gone off the board here. This is our X2, Y2. So now in this case, you're projecting from this auxiliary view, so you're gonna have to work from the X, Y line back to plan. All right, now there isn't too much of a distance there, or a gap, so we don't need too much of a datum line. So for your center point, or your point view of the line section, you get your distance here. Okay, it's going to be the same as you see there for the other side. So therefore, this point represents the line in section. Next, we need the height for the next point here of our point A, which isn't much of a distance at all. And that is the top point of surface A. And then the top point here for surface B good distance down, find that over here, I need to extend again my line, and that is B. Okay, look, you can still see that, so join them in strong, and that's your dihedral angle then between the two surfaces. back quickly on uh, over that quickly you need to find the line section which was given to you this was the line section here it wasn't a true length in any of the views so therefore it had to be you had to do your two auxiliary views firstly perpendicular to the line section find your heights from your data line down to plan this was your auxiliary view okay that gave you a true length of your line section and by projecting perpendicular to that then you see your two views as edge views Okay, and that gives you a dihedral angle between them. Okay, so here we have our surface A, our surface B, that's the true length, and then this is the section that was gone off the camera there. You can see your line of section as a point, and you'll see the two surfaces as edge views, as lines, and that is your dihedral angle between them. So remember, perpendicular first, then parallel. Okay, and that is part B done. So determine the dihedral angle between surfaces A and B is done. C, determine the vertical trace and horizontal trace of the plane that contains surface B. Okay, so I'll zoom out now for that. Okay, so to find the traces of that oblique plane B, we need to look at its edges first. So you see here in B, so we'll label this point 0, point 0.1 and point 0.2. So here you have 0, you have 1 and you have 2. 
So you can see there, one of the edges is a true length. So zero to two is parallel to the XY line plan. Therefore, zero to two is a true length in elevation. So we can extend that edge down to where it hits the horizontal trace, project that down and across, and it'll show us one of the points on the horizontal trace. So extend zero and two, your true length there down to where you hit the horizontal plane. So the horizontal plane is represented by the XY line in elevation. So that's where it hits there's a horizontal plane in elevation. Project that down and bring your point across parallel to XY line because that'd be true length. And that is one of the points on the horizontal trace. Now one point is good enough. We'll have to do the same with the other edge, so we're leaving off that straight edge here, one to two, okay, because we need to find it projecting over here to find another point on our horizontal trace. So the next one is zero to one. If we project zero to one down, extend it down, so this is our plane here, so it's going down to the horizontal plane. So if you project this edge now of the surface, because that's your plane there, if you're projecting, keep projecting your surfaces down to the horizontal plane, it'll give you the horizontal trace. So we project zero and one down until you hit the XY line. Project that straight down and extend zero and one down to see where it would be in plan. And that will give you another point on your horizontal trace. Because you're just copying what you did in the elevation. You're extending zero and one down extends zero and one, and this is where it hit the horizontal plane. So bring that back down, and this is where it cuts the horizontal plane. Now you have two lines, or two points on the line. You can join them and bring it up till it hits XY line. So that's your HT, your horizontal trace. Next step, we need the vertical trace. So to find, once you have one of the traces found, you can project a point to your surface parallel to it up to the XY line and find that point in the elevation. All right, so in this case, we're going to project, so our plane, we're going to project point one parallel to it up to you hit the vertical plane. So the XY line represents the vertical plane plan. So project one back up, same angle as the horizontal trace, bring that point straight up and bring point one straight across to give you a point on the VT. So this line is parallel to the horizontal trace. You brought that straight up and straight across, parallel to the X, Y, giving you a true length. Now you can join that point back to the VT there, and this is your vertical trace. Okay, so that's where the plane cuts the vertical plane. All right, so just to recap, by projecting your edges of the surface, extend them down to the hit the horizontal plane. By projecting down and extending in plan, it gave you true positions for them on the horizontal plane. Connect them back up to the XY line, and then draw point one parallel to the horizontal trace up to you hit the vertical plane, and then straight up and straight across point one to find a point on the vertical trace. Okay, so that is part C done, and now we're looking at part D. So the dihedral angle between surfaces B and C is 160 degrees. Complete the projections for surface C. All right, so now we're looking at surface B and C. And as you can see here, C, we need to find this point. We have it in plan, but we don't have an elevation. So let's just project that up for the sake of it now. So C has to be on that line somewhere. Now it's telling you the angle here, so this is our line of intersection for surfaces B and C, and it's telling you the angle between them is 160. So what we need to do is find, like we did with part uh, A and B, we need to find the dihedral angle here, we need to find edge views. And if you look at the line of section, the points 1, 2, they are parallel to the XY line in elevation. So if one, the 1, 2 line, the line of section is parallel to the XY line in elevation, that means this line here in plan is a true length. And if it's a true length already, you don't need to go 
perpendicular to it initially. So what we need to do is project parallel to it now and get an edge view of our surfaces here. And the reason we're doing it from the plan is we already have the full point C. So if we can find the height for it of the XY line, we can put the height up here into the elevation. So I'm just going to zoom out again, just so because I'm going to project down here to the right hand side, bottom right. Okay, so that line one, two is a true length and it's our line of section. So project the point for C down here to the right hand side. Project the line one and two and project that point zero as well because we need the full surface B. Put in another X1, Y1. We keep it nice and close now so we don't run off the page. And because you're projecting from the plan, it's an auxiliary elevation, so you have to get your heights from the elevation. And to save me room, I'm going to put another datum line at point zero, so that it saves me room. So again, that's your datum which means zero is on the XY line. Point one is the distance from the datum line up to point one there, which is on this line here. It's also going to be the same height for two. So this will give you points one and two. So if we join them back, that is surface B. And it said that the heated angle between them is 160 degrees. So you know C has to be on this line somewhere. So if I get a heated angle there of 160 degrees with my protractor, that's our dihedral angle of 160. So now we work backwards. We now found the auxiliary elevation and the dihedral angle, the edge view of the surfaces there. If this is projected from the plan, this view is an auxiliary elevation. And if it's an auxiliary elevation, just like how we got our heights, then the distance from the X1, Y1 here, back up to there, that distance, that height, is going to be the height for your point C in elevation. So let's get that height. So you're getting this height here. Now remember, you put in a datum line. So it has to be, that's the distance from the datum line. And this is point C here. Put your distance up there. That's your point four. Join that back to points one and two to get surface C. Okay, so that's the question done. That's parts, that was the last part there, part D. So the heater line between surface B and C is 160 which you see here, and to complete the projection. So we found the height for point C, it's only a matter of putting it into the elevation. So that's the question done. Uh, as always, I hope that helped. As you see in this image here, this was a request. And it was in a comment from another video. So as always, if there's some question you want to see done that I haven't got up, just let me know in the comment section. Okay, again, hope that helped, and thanks. We'll see you in the next one.